Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Rustic Village Christmas Ornament, which you can see here in front of you. I love this Christmas ornament. It uh, is worked in rounds from the center and it's two pieces that are then crocheted together. It's fairly easy, it works up quite quickly, and there are so many options for color when it comes to this design. This is all the same pattern, and all I've done is switched up when I make my color changes. So it's so much fun. You can make a whole bunch of these for your own tree or uh, as a gift, or even to make for craft sales. It's an excellent item for it. For the tutorial today, I'm going to be using some of this Dishy yarn uh, by We Crochet and Knit Picks. This is a 100% worsted weight cotton. You're only going to need about 30 to 40 yards per color per ornament, depending on uh, the color pattern that you choose. I'm working in two different colors. Uh, the colors here are Swan, which is this white and the Douglas fur for the green. But you can use any worsted weight cotton that you desire. You're also going to need a 3.5 or an E4 crochet hook, 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, and uh, links to all these items can be found in the description of the video. Also in the description, you'll find a direct link to the free written pattern, which is on richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to take a look around, subscribe. There are some other Christmas ornaments here on my channel. And uh, if you happen to make them, feel free to tag me. I love to check them out. And don't forget to say hello down in the comments. For our design today, we are going to be working in rounds. And uh, as I mentioned, we're going to make two faces that are then crocheted together in the end. So these next four rounds, you're going to work them twice. So we're going to start by either making a magic ring or by chaining two and then crocheting into that second chain. It's up to you. If you use the magic ring, you can make it really tight. I make a really simple magic ring. I just take my yarn, cross it over, pull up my working yarn through, and place it on my hook. You're then going to chain one, or if you've chained two, you don't need to chain one. And you're going to work a chain one, uh, a puff stitch, a chain one, six times into the center of your ring. So to work your puff stitch, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the center of your ring, yarn over, and drop a loop. You're going to do that three times. So there's once, twice, three times, yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook and chain one. You're going to do that five more times all into the center of your ring. And chain one. There's three, four, five, and six. Chain one, pull your magic ring closed if you've worked with a magic ring, and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first puff stitch. At this time, we're going to change our color so you can fasten off. For round two, this is my round one, I'm going to join in any chain one space. So I'm just going to take my color B, make a slip knot, and 
and pull it through in any chain one space. You're then going to chain one and into this first chain one space you're going to work a puff stitch chain one and puff stitch back into the same space. Skip the next puff stitch and into the next chain one space. You're going to work a puff stitch. Chain one and puff stitch. You're going to repeat that in every chain one space all the way around. So in each of the final four chain one spaces, you're going to work puff stitch, chain one, puff stitch. All the way around. You will notice that because we're using such a small hook it will curl a little bit but that's going to um, when we join it to the other side it's going to cause it to puff out a little bit so that you don't need to stuff it with fiber filler or anything. So we kind of want that curl. One more chain one space. When you come all the way around you'll have 12 puff stitches and you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and fasten off. For round three, once again, we're going to join in any chain one space. So your chain one space between your two puff stitches, join your yarn and chain one. You're then going to into this first chain one space, work a puff stitch. Chain one and puff stitch. You're then going to skip the next puff stitch and in between that next one and the one after it you're going to work one puff stitch. So right now we're just working in the space between the next two puff stitches. And you're just working one. You're then going to skip the next puff stitch and in your next chain one space work a puff stitch. Chain one and puff stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around. In between your next two puff stitches work one puff stitch. In the next chain one space work a puff stitch, chain one and puff stitch. All the way around when you come to your first stitch you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. just about all the way around here on my round three. I'm working my final puff stitch in between the next two puff stitches and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. 
and fasten off. For round four, you're then going to take your color B once again in any chain one space. You're going to join your yarn and chain one. Into that first chain one space, you're going to work a puff stitch, chain one and puff stitch, Skip the next puff and into the top of your next puff stitch. So this is your single puff stitch that you worked in between the two down below. So in the top of this single puff stitch, you're going to work a puff stitch, chain one, and puff stitch. Hop over to your next chain one space, into that chain one space, work a puff stitch, chain one, and puff stitch. Skip the next stitch into the top of your next puff stitch, work a puff stitch. chain one and puff stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around and join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. I am here in the top of my final puff stitch. Join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch at the end and then fasten off. You can then go ahead, weave in any ends that you might have, and you're going to go and repeat those last four rounds once again to make a nether. So set that one aside, start with your magic ring, work your six puff stitches and chain ones into the center of that ring and so forth. So you want to make another side and uh, then meet me back here. Once you have your two sides worked, you're going to place them together so that the wrong sides are facing inward. There's not too, too much difference between the right and the wrong side. So you're just going to place your two sides together, working through both thicknesses, join your yarn, and I'm using color uh, B again, but it's really up to you. Join your yarn with a slip stitch in any stitch. When you join, you want to work through both loops of both sides. You're then going to work a single crochet working through both thicknesses in each stitch and each chain uh, one space all the way around. So into each stitch, into each chain one space all the way around, being sure you don't skip any stitches, uh, you don't want to leave any gaps or anything like that but uh, work in each stitch all the way around. When you come all the way around, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. When you come all the way around, working your single crochet stitches in each stitch, you can join your yarn with a slip stitch into the first stitch and you're then going to fasten off leaving a little bit of a long tail. Now I'm going to use this tail to make the hanger for my stocking so if you'd rather use a different material you're welcome just to fasten off and weave in your ends. So once you've fastened off all I did for my hanger 
is take a yarn needle with my long tail, thread it through, and just down here at the base, make it as long as you would like, and then kind of work a knot. like so, and then simply tuck your tail in as you would uh, fastening off otherwise. And that's your Rustic Village Christmas ornament. So thank you so much for joining me. Don't be afraid to mix up the color change combinations. And uh, as always, feel free to tag me on social media and I'd love to come and see your finished ornaments. So until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.